Panthers are eight and one. Always a fun time of year. We've got one of the best matchups in the backcourt in the nation, not only this weekend, but maybe this season, Sean. And Jared Harper, preseason All-SEC for the Tigers, playing very well, but he needs a bounce-back performance after a loss at NC State. Yeah, when he plays well, Auburn plays well. So he needs to come out, set the tone early. He can finish at the rim, gets his teammates involved. Look for him to have a good, quick start. For the Racers, Ja Morant, he's just a sophomore, a native of South Carolina, leads the country at almost 10 assists per game. Yeah, really fun to watch. Explosive player, elite-level athlete, but also really smart basketball player with a high IQ. That shows you those assists. And then when the lights are the brightest, he had 38 at Auburn earlier in the season. Bryce Brown in the starting lineup today, despite the fact he's been suffering from flu-like symptoms. Yeah, didn't go through the shoot-around. Maybe affected him a little bit at NC State. It was starting to kick in. He had a rough game. See how much he can go. He is the best on-ball defender. So you would imagine he would match up on Morant a little bit, so see what he can do on the defensive end as well as the offensive end. Austin Wiley also inserted into the Auburn starting lineup, replacing Anthony McLemore as Bruce Pearl looks for a spark. Murray State defending OVC champs from a year ago. And opening up in a man-to-man -man defense. Important for Auburn to get off to a fast start. Brown will try to do just that. Wiley on the offensive glass. Outside, Okiki for three. Wide open. Go for eight. In the first half from three against NC State, that's a good sign for Auburn to knock down the second chance opportunity. Starting five for the Racers, Jack Buchanan and Ja Morant teaming up to form one of the top backcourts in the OVC. And Morant on cue, back iron. An open look, Downey for three! Starting five for Auburn. We mentioned Austin Wiley starting for the first time this year, replacing Anthony McLemore, who started the first 11 contests. And it's an explosive offense right out of the gate, knocking down a couple threes. Davis left open. A brick. And stolen by Downey. Auburn in transition. Wiley corrals it and puts it in. An 8 nothing start for Auburn. And this sellout crowd on its feet, Sean. This is a different focus, a different energy coming from this Auburn Tiger team. What you saw at the start of the NC State game, pushing the ball, getting out in the open floor, feeding the big man inside. Those are easy buckets. And then struggling from beyond the arc in the last game, not the case. And the quick start here, already a couple threes. But when this Auburn team gets out and runs, it's transition looks, they are tough to defend. Well, it's a sellout crowd here at Auburn Arena. First come, first serve seating. And these fans have shown up in droves. 90 seconds in, their Tigers off and running. It's amazing, too. You hit the three ball, all of a sudden the basket looks bigger. You feel better about life. And the 25 turnover performance against NC State three days ago seems like, well, it was last year. And anytime you're making shots, you feel good. It boosts your energy. You usually play a little bit better defense when you're knocking down shots. Imagine that. A terrific start for Auburn here on the offensive end. It's been a fun day of SEC basketball around the conference. A lot of matchups with the ACC, and there's John ja Morant, his first hoop. He is so quick getting to the rim, and then that athletic ability there exploding to the basket using the rim as a defender so Wiley couldn't block the shot. Wiley launches, an air ball, Dowdy. Puts it up and in. Yeah. Matt McMahon, head coach for Murray State, was worried about the defensive rebounding already. We've seen a couple offensive rebounds that have led to points, second chance points early in this ball game. Murray State's got a box out. Off the mark was Buchanan. Here comes Brown. Make that Harper.
Auburn picked third in the SEC in the preseason poll, reached the NCAA tournament last year. Harper will shoot two. Bruce Pearl, year number five. What a great job he's done turning things around here on the Plains. You see the 26 victories a year ago, the most since the late 1990s. And this team this year, honestly, Sean, has just as much potential, if not more. Yeah, it's a very deep team this year. They can play 10 guys. That was not the case last year. A couple injuries late in the season. They lost McMore. Brown was favoring a couple injuries as well. So this is a team that kind of limped into the NCAA tournament. They're playing their best ball in the middle of the SEC. So they're coming back. feel like they have some unfinished business. They want to prove that they can not only win the SEC again this year, but make a run in the NCAA tournament. Harper, one of the best free throw shooters in the conference. Missed two from the corner. It's all net. Tevin Brown, the freshman. Tevin Brown is a very good three-point shooter. 80% of his shots are going to come from beyond the arc. So you got to fly him. He's shooting over 40% from three. You put him around a guy like John Moran, he's going to find you. Just be ready to shoot the ball. Well, Kiki off the bounce. Can't connect. Yeah, Brown's made a three now in all ten games this year for Murray State. We well, see why the scouts like Moran a little behind the back, and that looked relatively easy. Yeah, and that was excellent defense by Brown to stay down in front of him, but the crowd liked it too. They kind of said, wow, look at those handles. So they're on for a little bit of a show here this afternoon. Contested threes, an air ball by Davis. He thought it was partially blocked. And instead, it's Auburn's basketball. Wiley, former five-star prospect, will shoot a pair. Sanchez picks up his first. Yeah, talking about the comparisons this year to last year, Auburn can go inside this year, and that's what Wiley Austin gives this team a player that can post up, score with his back to the basket. Auburn much more perimeter oriented last year. Shooting threes, four and five man's interchangeable. Matt McMahon, year number four, Murray State, picked second in the conference this year behind only Belmont. That was the team he beat in the OVC tournament championship a year ago. Energetic, charismatic. Much like his counterpart, Bruce Pearl. 0 of 2 at the line for Wiley after Harper missed a pair. Well, I like what you said, though. With Wiley in the fold this year, you have somebody that can protect the rim. McLemore's injury really hurt Auburn a season ago. And he's a guy you can go back to the basket in the post, on the block. He can put two in the bucket for you. Yeah, when you're struggling to shoot the basketball or score, it's very nice to have that low post option to get some buckets. Moran gets it to go. Boy, he was in the air forever. He's got four. Harper launches for three. Boy, some offensive fireworks early. And there's the back and forth. And we're going to see all afternoon Moran getting all the way to the basket, using his athletic ability. And then the quick push and answer by Harper to knock down the three. Ten to shoot for Murray State. Moran thinking about it. From way downtown, he's got seven. He's only shooting 30% from beyond the arc, but the shot looks good, and he shoots it with confidence. Early in the year, he had a six for 12 game from beyond the arc, so he's capable of knocking down the three. When he starts making threes on a consistent basis. This would be very difficult to go. Wiley banks that went in. 15 to 10 Tigers. Moran scored 38 against Alabama. That's the lone loss for Murray State this season. A competitive loss in Tuscaloosa. Whips that pass to Buchanan baseline, and from 15, he connects. Moran's going to find you. He'll just be ready. Get those openings. And a foul inside on Tevin Brown. We're excited to watch the point guard matchup, and early on, we have not been disappointed. Ja Morant getting to the basket and finishing, and then the answer on the other end, Harper from three.
Again, understand the passion of your opponent. Understand the prize on our head. Understand it's the biggest game of the year for them. You, got, you just got to understand that. And you guys know, you've told me before, there are times that you get a little bit more excited about playing some opponents than the other. That's just human nature. All right, so we've got to deal with the fact that we're going to get that from everybody. That's why we got to be the more passionate team. we got to be the most excited team. we got to want to have a Merry Christmas than that. That's the bottom line. Okay? That's when adversity beats your best when things are at their worst. We'll get through it. We'll get through it. Get on to the next play. All right? And then our, our deal is just we just got to keep getting better. Okay? we got this one. we got one more, and then it's the SEC. When we need to be playing our best basketball, all right? We're playing good teams right now. UAB, good team exposed to NC State, good team. This is a win against an NCAA tournament team. They're not going to give it to us. We're going to have to take it and make plays. Bring wow. it. Well, you love Bruce Pearl. You love his energy. And you love this sellout crowd. Sean Harrington, Roy Philpott. It's going to take a solid effort today to take care of Murray State. They won the OBC last year, and we've seen already they've got some serious talent. What a great test for Auburn. Yeah, absolutely. And you heard Bruce Pearl talk about it. The schedule's difficult. It started in Maui, and now you've got a stretch of UAB, NC State. Now, this Murray State team is an NCAA tournament team. They have a very good chance of winning the OVC again. They have an elite player in John Morant. So you're not going to see many players the rest of the season that have the athletic ability and the playmaking ability of Morant. One more coming for Wiley. You played college hoops. You know talent. You recognize talent. Are you a bit surprised with the speed of Morant with what we've seen so far? Absolutely. He plays at a different level and different gears. When you want to see an elite guard, how do they change directions? How do they change speed? And two things that he does extremely well, changes direction, changes speed. He lives inside the lane. When he gets in the lane, he is extremely difficult to guard. Wiley checks out. Brown launches. Back iron, but gets it back. helter-skelter kind of pace so far and a steal McCormick off the bench nearly gives it back Auburn maintains possession Javon McCormick like Morant has unbelievable athleticism he's had a couple of highlight real jams already this year in a game where nothing went right against NC State he was a bright spot he had 14 really had a spark there in the second half to get Auburn back into it. Four to shoot from the corner. And cleared by Morant. Brilliant pass ahead. Rejected at the rim. Dunbar got there, but the stick back makes it a one possession game. Really good lead pass. Morant setting that up. And then not stopping on the play, hustling in to get that offensive rebound put back. It was K.J. Williams that snuck in there. Entertaining start in this one. I'll ask you this, too. Auburn can learn from that loss at NC State with the turnovers as Williams picks up his first. This is really good hustle by Dunbar. And then Williams with the finish, not giving up on the play. Good job staying with it. Purifoy checking in. Angel Purifoy, the junior forward out of Centerville, Alabama. But if you're Bruce Pearl, that's teaching film, right, from Riley, where you turn it over 25 times and you still had a chance to win. Yeah, and that's uncharacteristic for this team. They don't turn the basketball over that much. Only two games this year they've had more than 15. Look out. Showtime! Morant, the steal, and the bucket. Nine points on four of five from the floor. Very good defender. All time disrupting, getting in the passing lanes. Loose balls, steal, turns defense to offense. I thought he was going to go full 360 or tomahawk jam. I thought something was coming. Just the two-handed flush. Beautiful ball movement for Auburn. McCormick attacking and finishing. I love the bounce. Yeah, great, great hop, good finish around the rim, but even better ball movement. Everybody involved that time for Auburn on that possession. Got that ball moving around the perimeter nicely. Skip pass. And Whitley can't connect in a late whistle.
Well, Morant's been stuffing the stat sheet all year long. He has a triple-double on the resume. And a three-point lead for Auburn. The under-12 timeout. And that's good defense leading to offense. Morant, the highlight reel finish. Murray State hanging in there with Auburn. Jared Harper, let's go on a fast break. Give me your best VP. Get on the line. Six times. Go. Playing at Auburn is amazing. If you didn't play basketball, what would you play? Baseball. What position? Shortstop. Jared Harper as a shortstop would be intriguing on the diamond. You see his numbers in an Auburn uniform. And he is closing in on 1,000 career points. And Sean, assuming nothing really wacky happens today, really good chance he'll get to that number in this basketball game against Murray State. Yeah, just a really good career here at Auburn. And he's really the engine that makes this car run. And when he has a good game, Auburn has a good game. He gets his teammates involved. You see the career assists. Also scoring the basketball. So he can do a little bit of everything for this team. Plays with a lot of energy can finish at the rim too at 5'11 you don't expect it but he'll rise up and dunk on you and finish hard at the basket anything surprise you so far with what we've seen between these two teams I think both teams have come out and played extremely well for Auburn has taken care of the basketball they've done a much better job of that and it starts with Harper can he push the basketball get the pace going the way Auburn likes it without turning the basketball over West Lennigan assistant coach here on the Plains, one of those five players with 1,000 points and 350 career assists. Harper's going to join him in very short order. One of two at the line to make it a two-point contest. Under 12 to play in our first half. McCormick, the lob. And it was picked off. Arnell Coward, who just checked in. Morant to Williams. And just like that, we're tied. Just plays with such poise. It's good defense to stop the push and transition. But Morant just keeps his dribble, keeps his footing, and then finds Williams inside. Purifoy off the mark. Auburn once led in this matchup by eight. We expect this to be a game of runs. First time Murray State has faced a team ranked in the top 10 since 2012. That was in the NCAA tournament. You heard Bruce Pearl talk about it with three to shoot. A fresh 30 in Williams. Throws up an air ball, but Coward gets it back. That's not going to make Bruce Pearl happy. That's the hustle, 50-50 basketballs. Murray State winning the battle of the boards that time. First lead for the Racers. McCormick. Murray State has stolen momentum in this one. Morant out of South Carolina, was recruited by Frank Martin of the Gamecocks. Appeared to be a lob, threw it up too strong. They're definitely trying to set up Williams that time, just not on the same page. Here's McLemore to Dunbar. Another rebound for Morant ahead to Brown. Up and under and well short. Good defense by Malik Dunbar. Auburn no points in the last two and a half minutes, Sean. And this is when Harper is not in the game. Who's going to take command of this team to make sure you get a good offensive possession and have a turnover on the offensive foul? Second on McLemore. And we remind you, the SEC Network has you covered for the college football playoff semifinals. That's Saturday, December 29th, hard to believe, a week from today. SEC Nation at 10 and 7, SEC goal line at noon. 
And then thinking out loud at 8, followed by a big-time recap at 11.30. And, of course, Alabama and Oklahoma down to the Capital One Orange Bowl. It's going to be a lot of fun to see Tua Tunga-Bailoa and Kyler Murray get after each other. And Alabama coming in undefeated and trying to go back-to-back. -back. Who do you got? It's hard to go against Alabama right now as well as they played all year. From the corner, Whitley connects with another triple. An 8 nothing run now for the Racers and their largest lead at 5. Auburn switched to zone that time. Good recognition by Murray State. And Bruce Pearl has seen it up. Well, a nice dime dropped as Whitley hit from the corner. It's a 1-3-1 look. So the corners are going to be open. The communication not there from Auburn's defense to rotate down. And good recognition by Murray State to get a shot from the corner. That's the weak part of a 1-3-1 zone. 12-2 run for the Racers, who are shooting 53%, 3 of 8 from downtown. And kind of what we expected in terms of their overall athleticism. They've been a little bit better, perhaps, offensively so far. And coming in at 8-1, the schedule and the record a little deceiving. The schedule wasn't that hard. There were some non-Division one wins on that slate and the one loss to Alabama last month. If you're Bruce Pearl, what are you telling your guys right now? Well, you have to play with poise. He talked about it in his pregame speech. It's easy to play with poise when you're up and shots are going in and everything's going right. They're facing a little bit of adversity now. Haven't played well in their last two games. Got off to a great start this afternoon, but now you're starting to struggle. Who's going to step up? Who's going to be the leader of this team? Get your team into an offense, get a good shot, and who's going to get some stops on the other end? So play with some poise, play within yourselves. It's a great teaching point right here for Auburn. Play through this. Back to a 2-3 zone now for Murray State. An open look for Harper. Oh, Kiki, the putback. He timed that one out beautifully. Murray State, you mentioned, goes zone. So in a zone, you don't have a man to box out. Okiki able to sneak in there on the weak side. Shot goes up. This is the weak side. There's no box out. Terrific job. Chuma Okiki to clean it up on the back end. Racers with three turnovers. Moran a bit out of control in that sequence. Harper directing traffic. Saved by Brown. And in fact, he stepped out of bounds. Four turnovers now for the Tigers. Well, you mentioned it too, the game before the loss at NC State, UAB took the Tigers to overtime, and that kind of raised some eyebrows. UAB's a good team, don't get me wrong. So now two games in where it's not the same kind of team that we saw early in the season, competitive against Duke and dominant in other stretches against better competition. Tested layup by Whitley, no good. Coward with the putback. Uh, the State continues to win the battle on the offensive boards there. And a really good answer from Bryce Brown, who has really struggled shooting the basketball. Over 10 from three in his last two games. Here comes the crowd. ISO for Morant. And a run out for Brown, just hit the three. What the flush! And we're tied at 26. Jack Buchanan. Foul on the floor. Back and forth we go, and coming up, we'll check in with the head man, Bruce Pearl, the head coach at Auburn. Inside Auburn Arena, tied at 26, under seven to play in a fast-moving first half. 
Now coming up Saturday, January 5th, men's basketball doubleheader headed your way. First at 3.30, number three, Tennessee, with national championship aspirations. We'll tangle with Georgia up in Knoxville, then Arkansas and Texas A&M from College Station. That's at 6 o'clock Eastern, Saturday, January 5th, and of course, right here on the SEC Network and also the ESPN app. And our Sean Harrington as the head coach of the Tigers right now, Bruce Pearl. Sean? All right, Coach, up and down battle right now. Real good matchup. What would you tell your team there in that last break? We can't let the point guard beat us. We're going to keep penetration in front. Got to do a better job of executing offensively, but love the tempo, love the pace. They're a good team. I appreciate it, Coach. Well, you love the accessibility in this Auburn basketball program. And Bruce Pearl always open to try new things. The in-game interview we love. There's his steal off the inbounds and a chance for Auburn to regain the lead. Austin Wiley back in, the spin, and the finish! Wiley with eight. Brown, the freshman. A turnover. Harper. In the paint, Wiley the put back. First player in double figures, he's got 10. Auburn getting this pace up and down, that's what they want to do, but playing under control, that's a big key. Can you play fast, but under control and take care of the basketball? Austin Wiley, 10 points, three rebounds already, Sean and scoring with your back to the basket, something that Auburn did not have last year that they have this year. And then the big fellow shows you, hey, I can get out and run too. I can play in this up and down tempo. Good rim run. Second time we've seen him get out on the break. Mom looking on, Vicki Orr, of course, great Auburn center here back in the late 1980s. And a fixture for all these home games on the Plains. Foul goes against Dowdy, that's his second, the transfer from VCU. And that'll put Buchanan at the stripe. Neither team in the bonus just let it yet. It's been a well-played first 20 minutes. This is what you like. Up and down action. Not a lot of whistles. Each team making plays. A couple runs back and forth at each other. Buchanan has three points. The second leading scorer for Murray State. One of two at the line. Auburn has been devastating in transition after points via the fast break so far. Ten more coming from Wiley down in the post. Making his first start of the season. Here's Dowdy. Little stutter step. Shot never hit the rim, so the shot clock didn't reset. And tapped out. Back to the racers. How about this crowd? They're into it. This has been a very good home court advantage for Auburn last couple years. Racers will set up their offense with John Morant. Out of control and a foul against Auburn. And I believe they got Horace Spencer. Bruce Pearl wanting a travel before the foul. Well, you love what you see from Morant, but there have been about four or five possessions where it feels like he's trying to do a little too much. Yeah, and he's trying to attack the rim, get guys involved, and you'll take some of those turnovers because of what he does for you offensively. He just gets into that lane, puts so much pressure on the defense, that occasionally he's going to force one. He does a really good job of setting up his teammates, making plays for himself. He's got to live with a couple of the fourth plays. Morant attacking and rejected. Spencer said not today. Outside to Brown. And a fresh 30 for Murray State. Boy, a lot happening in that sequence. And there's a turnover. Horace Spencer, the senior, for Philly. Great action all around. Oh, Horace Spencer going straight up. Denying 
Moran at the rim. One thing you can say about John Moran, he's not scared. Not intimidated by this environment or this top 10 program. And we mentioned 38 points at Alabama earlier in the year. So when he plays against tough competition, he's bringing it. Harper with three. Okiki for three. Spencer on the offensive glass. With the finish and a chance for three. With the old school up and under. Morris Spencer, really good job, active on the boards. And right underneath the defense, takes the contact and finishes. Now both of these teams trying to finish the month of December on a high note right before Christmas. And as a player, you understand, you get that last win before the Christmas break, right before league play gets underway it's a big deal it gives you a little mojo yeah, it makes everything better you can get a couple days to go back home recharge and you want that good feeling in your system Spencer sure. swatted that one away Brown gets it back racers no points in the last three and a half minutes offensive foul wave off the bucket and how about Horace Spencer, these last four possessions, really, on both ends of the floor, Sean? And giving them some energy. Horace Spencer, good job on both ends of the floor. How about this? Is this the best basket that's not going to count of the afternoon? Back on the Plains, what a fun start in this one, 32-27. Auburn out in front of Murray State, John Arrington, Roy Philpott, John Morant. Nine points, only one assist so far today. He does lead the country in that number. He was also kind of grabbing at his hip there a few minutes ago. And he was trying to stretch it out during that timeout as well. Hard fall a couple possessions ago. Well, I parachuted in here at Auburn earlier today, and on the flight into town, I sat next to an NBA scout, and I asked him, I said, who are you here to see? And I think they're interested in Austin Wiley and some of the other players in this Auburn backcourt, but also John ja Morant to see what he can do against this kind of competition, because after today, really the Super Bowl for Murray State, if you will, they're going to be favored in almost every other game in the OVC. So always a lot at stake this time of year, not only from a team perspective, but for these players that have aspirations of going to the next level. Off the cut, a pump fake. Okiki inside, and he's got a chance for three. Chumo Okiki, the sophomore from Atlanta. 52% from the floor this year, and that's one of the reasons why. And a balanced attack from Auburn. When they can play inside and out, they're difficult to match up against. If you're a coach getting ready to prepare this scout, you start pulling your hair out when they start scoring from the outside and inside. When you're a coach, you want to look at what can we take away from this team to make them struggle to score. And if Auburn starts scoring from the inside and out, it's pick your poison. Oh, I like that. Auburn in the midst of a 13-1 run, responding to the 12-2 run by Murray State. Tigers once led by eight. It's back up to seven after they trailed by five moments ago. It's been a game of runs. Morant rejected. Okiki. Whitley. Harper probing outside to Dunbar. And, Sean, you get the sense an important stretch now for Murray State trailing by seven with less than three to play here. Yeah, you have to close out the half strong. You played a good first half. You want to be within striking distance here 
Make a little run to end the half to feel good about what you did in the first half. Coward down low with the spin. Well, he had the first step, and that paid some dividends. That's playing before you catch the basketball. Coward did a really good job sitting on the defender's leg, creating that angle. And if you're Horace Spencer, you can't gamble. Offensive foul inside. Okiki was trying to spring free. And whistled for the infraction. So Auburn in the bonus. Murray State also in the bonus. Five-point game approaching two to play. Well, it's been a fun day in the SEC. We saw Tennessee handle Wake Forest. Been some SEC-ACC matchups. We have Kentucky and North Carolina getting it on today as well. So good way to kind of judge conferences and figure out who sits where in the early pecking order. I even saw a bracketology update somewhere floating around, and I can't believe it's already time for that. Coart can't connect. Cleared by Dunbar. Never too early for bracketology. I mean, I had to laugh, but I agree. I, I really, when Joey Brackets gets that thing going at any point in time, I'm interested in it. And a blocking foul. Dunbar will shoot a pair. And this is what we're talking about. Yeah, it's December. Conference play hasn't started yet, but why not? Tennessee right now projected as a two seed. I think the balls could be a one. Kentucky certainly is going to get better, and Auburn right now as a three. And Tennessee is playing as good as anybody in the country right now. It, Schofield and Williams are getting a lot of the publicity, which they should. Both are having tremendous seasons. But right now, Jordan Bone is playing as good as anybody. Nobody's talking about him. Yeah. He is really setting his teammates up. He's getting over six assists a game, averaging 13 a game. So that is a dangerous team to make a serious run in the NCAA tournament. Just kind of looking at it. How about LSU? If they were a 10 seed with the roster that they had, I would not want to be the seven that sees them in that first round. No thanks. I'm with you. And your points about Tennessee, spot on. They are grown men. Now, Brown was feeling it for a moment. Off the mark there. And yeah, Tennessee handled Gonzaga. You beat Gonzaga this year. I don't care who you are. Uh, you got a chance to make a really deep run all the way to the Final Four. Here's the lob and the finish by Buchanan. That's the court vision and that's the poise. It's a loose ball. They're diving around your feet. You come up with it, gather. See Buchanan out of the corner of your eye and put a perfect pass up at the rim. Approaching a minute to play, Brown. Okiki left open. And a chance for Murray State to make it a one possession game. And you want to go two for one if you can here if you're Murray State. Get two shots to Auburn's one with the clock winding down to get momentum going into the half. I don't know if enough schools do that. I'm with you 100%. Buchanan back iron. On the putback attempt, a foul. And Whitley will shoot two. Now the SEC Network has you covered for the college football playoff semifinal matchups as we kick things off. SEC, SEC Nation, 10 a.m. Eastern, followed by SEC Goal Line. SEC Nation returns at 7, then thinking out loud at 8. Their mega cast. That's all a week from today, and of course also on the ESPN app, Alabama and Oklahoma. Sean said it best earlier, hard to go against Tua Tungabailoa. Auburn fans, cover your eyes, if you will. But I would agree with that. Tide are rolling. And now Auburn, a scoreless drought over the last four, over the course of the last three minutes. And Brown's going to change that. He looks different today. Yeah, the release, very confident in his shot. Good job by Harper getting into the lane. That allows Brown to step into the three. Much higher percentage. Murray State, you've chipped into this lead. You've done a good job. Finish the half off right here. You get a bucket here. You're only one possession down going to the half. Trapping pressure, lob for Buchanan, executed beautifully. Shot clock is off. Here's Harper, launches the three. And as we catch our collective breath, what a first half in the books here on the Plains, 38-35. A lot of fun, both teams trading baskets, going back and forth. Harper getting into the lane. Setting up the shooter, Bryce Brown, shooting with confidence. 
Send you down to the studio for SCC Now, the halftime report. Back on the plane, start of our second half. Number seven, Auburn leading Murray State 38 to 35 as we catch our breath after an incredible pace, a blistering pace right before Christmas here in those first 20 minutes. Great to have you here inside Auburn Arena. Sean Harrington, Roy Philpott. That was fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Two teams getting after it, going up and down the floor, answering runs back and forth. Exactly what we want to see. High-paced game with quality shots at both ends. So Bruce Pearl decides to start Austin Wiley for the first time this season. Really paid dividends, double figures in those first 20 minutes. He was all over the place in that first half. Yeah, when you can be a team that can score from the inside and out, you are very difficult to get ready for in a scouting report. And Austin Wiley gives you that guy that can score with his back to the basket, puts pressure on the defense down low. And a really good sign for Auburn when Bryce Brown is knocking down threes. He got off to a good start, two for four from beyond the arc in the first half. Love what you said. Auburn this season now has a back-to-the-basket player, a rim protector in Austin Wiley. We'll see if he continues to start games as conference play gets underway in just a couple of weeks. Auburn gets one more non-conference tilt against North Florida on December 29th. And then league play begins at Ole Miss soon thereafter. So still a chance to work out some of the kinks. They're doing that today. They're going to be tested in this second half. The Murray State team not afraid to come into a tough environment against a very good team. Battle tested. They played Alabama extremely tough just a month ago on the road. And you got a guy, John Morant. He can keep you in the ball game and carry a team. He scored 38 in that contest. Six-point loss and out of the gate. Three ball by Shaq Buchanan. A very good first possession coming out of the break. Obviously, the lob was the set play, but then the play through that and get a three. Start off the half on the right foot. Inside, Wiley lost the handle, but you saw a little spring in the step with Brown. We didn't know if he would start today. He was having flu like symptoms the last couple of days, maybe even going back to the NC State game on the road. Really didn't do much at shoot around this morning. Wiley spins it in. It's a good attack on the inside. So I did it against NC State as well. Out of the half, attack the rim, playing through Wiley. Blocked by Okiki outside to Buchanan. That's been his spot, and it continues to be. Shaq Buchanan with 13. And Murray State back out in front, Sean. Buchanan can really score the basketball. He's averaging 12 a game. Hasn't shot it well from beyond the arc. But shooting it with confidence right now. That's back-to-back -back threes to start the second half. Dowdy inside the VCU transfer. A really good drive to the rim by Dowdy. But again, Wiley, even when he's not touching the basketball, making his presence felt, he's posting up on the inside. Occupying that defender, that allows the open driving lanes. Dowdy taking advantage of it that time. Sellout crowd still settling into their seats. Start our second half. Five to shoot. Morant thinking about it. And attacking the foul on the court. Austin Wiley already 12 points. And out of the halftime, it's... The message, get the ball to the big fella inside there. He's driving to his right, using the glass. Inside Buchanan, wide open, missed the chippy. Well, you don't see that too often. Now, he was looking for contact, and you can see he even looked back, thinking the defender was going to be there. Harper turns it over, here comes Morant. Draws the contact and a chance for three. Wow. You want to talk about a crafty play by a sophomore. Waited for the defender. Gets out in front of the break. You can see he's just sizing Okiki up. Is he going to try to block it? Is he going to let me go? Absorbs the contact. Finish at the rim. Three-point play. Morant with 12. 
to go along with six rebounds. Murray State by two. Racers come into this game at eight and one. Auburn at nine and two. Only losses to NC State and Duke. Okiki with a bounce. Jim Okiki having himself quite a performance. Already with nine. Auburn continues to get the basketball inside. This time it's Okiki just off the block. When you have shooters spaced around perimeter, there's no double team coming. Good job by Okiki to take his time to make a good post move. That went against Sanctus. That's his second. Brown from the corner. It's all net. Murray State by three. That's a really good break out of the free throw for Murray State and really bad transition defense for Auburn. You have to communicate Better find Brown. That's what he does. He shoots threes. And we've seen more free throw attempts to start our second half. Dowdy's he's got two more coming. We thought this could be the pace that we would see today. And you mentioned transition defense for Auburn. That was one of the things Bruce Pearl harped on in his pregame pep talk with his team. Got to find a way to get back. Defend Morant and Buchanan, two of the OVC's best guards. And they had it diagrammed up early. You have to communicate there. That's just out of a free throw break. Give up a wide open three in the corner. That guy's not talking, not pointing, not picking out where the open man is. And Bruce Pearl now encouraging this sellout crowd. Backdoor cut. Morant will shoot two, and Okiki can't believe it. Comes over the top. There's ball up top, but comes across the head there. Definitely contact on the shooter. Racers by a point. Morant with 12. Mentioned he recorded his second career triple-double earlier this year. He's got 13 and 7 boards so far tonight. I love these kinds of matchups. They're always fun. You know that Auburn's going to be tested. Bruce Pearl knew it. We spoke with him earlier today. And it's really good because it gives you a better feel for what to expect with your team come tournament time. And as SEC play ensues next month, right? Yeah, and this is an NCAA tournament-like opponent. Murray State represented the OVC last year. They're going to be right there to represent them again this year. Catch and shoot for Tevin Brown, another triple. Transition defense has not been there. For Murray State, this is a great game as well. Continue to play with confidence, and you can see right now they feel like they belong on this court. Racers, a perfect four for four from downtown in this second half. And they're quick shots in transition right now. Shooters are running to their spots. Tevin Brown that time getting out on the wing in transition. Mentioned shooting with confidence. As soon as they release it, it looks good coming off the hands. Well, they have fed off the play of Buchanan and Morant. Auburn trailing by six, a little shake and bake for Brown. In and out, Wiley in a fresh 30. Okiki inside, and Chimo Okiki now in double digits. Coward down low goes to work, puts it in. And he's got eight. Really good job by Coward, running the floor, getting down to the rim before the defense could get set. He did his work before he caught the basketball. Sean, these two teams played one year ago up at Murray State. That was a closely contested game as Wiley connects from point blank range. Auburn won it by four, but it was back and forth just like this one tonight. And here we go. Buchanan got his pocket picked by Okiki. Harper, the floater. He's got five, the lead is two. 
Morant puts it in, and back and forth we go. This is fun. And these two point guards are pushing when they have the opportunities. They're making plays, setting up teammates. Five minutes into this second half. It's been entertaining. Dowdy spins it in. Good use of the shot fake from Dowdy on the inside and then using the rim as a shield from the defender to finish on the opposite side. Morant sizes up a triple. Wiley the board. Beautiful skip pass. Downey from the corner, and why not? Auburn back in front. And a timeout for Murray State. A lot of great action. Harper setting up his teammates, getting into the lane. Dowdy buries it from the corner. You can watch UFC on ESPN Plus, in addition to thousands of other live events, including over 2,500 college basketball games, international soccer, which really pleases John Harrington. You can sign up for it now by downloading the ESPN app or by visiting ESPNPlus.com. Here on the Plains, Auburn Arena, what a start in this one for both sides, really. A highly contested game, a high level of offensive basketball in a one-point contest, Auburn. Right now on top of Murray State, we've seen six lead changes in this second half. We've been tied four times, and John Morant has lived up to the billing. Morant, 16.7 rebounds, an NBA prospect, a first-round prospect, just a sophomore, and running point tonight, he's been electric. Out of the timeout, behind the back. No look dish, Buchanan. Yes! What a sequence for Morant. How did he spot number 11 wide open? When there he shows both of how good he can be. It's the athletic ability, going behind the back, getting into the lane, and then it's the basketball IQ. Knowing where his teammates are on the floor, not panicking, finding the shooter. Dowdy's been hot, comes up short here. It has been a blistering pace tonight. Sanctus. Cleared by Harper. Or Spencer checking back in. Numero zero for AU. And Harper from downtown. He has eight, his second three ball of the game. Both of these teams are scoring point guards and also get their teammates involved. Davis left open. Had too much time to think about it. McCormick. Yes! Javon McCormick, the spark off the bench at NC State. Doing more of that today. Really good find by Harper in the corner. And had the rim runner going right to the basket. Made Murray State suck in. And that left the three wide open in the corner. Morant had the pass deflected and picked off. McLemore with a steal. And that pass batted out of bounds. It'll stay with Auburn. And how about the Tigers from downtown tonight, Sean? This team is so difficult to guard when they're making threes. Harper getting it done himself and then Finding his teammate on the break. Terrific feed to the corner. Threes are falling. Bruce Pearl knew it was going to be a tough game. Murray State defending OBC champs and on the road with an 8-1 record. They are playing like it in this basketball game. 
Sean Harrington, Roy Philpott. The lead is four for number seven, Auburn. And this one's been a lot of fun throughout. Yeah, give Auburn a lot of credit for playing this game and scheduling this game. This is not yeah. your typical bye game. This is a home and home. They went to Murray State last year. Get them again this year. Bruce Pearl said, we're going to test his team. Murray State's NCAA tournament team last year very well could be an NCAA tournament team this year. And so he wants his guys to play against good competition. Well, we showed you that three by Harper going out to break. He now has eight points, seven assists, just one turnover. So he continues to do a great job directing traffic with Auburn offensively. A preseason SEC pick, probably not his best game last time out as we documented at NC State. And you expect a player with his experience of his caliber to do exactly what he's done so far. Yeah, when you struggle and you're a good player, you want to get right back out there and get that next game going. And that's what we've seen out of out of uh, Jared Harper today. And see the eight points, seven assists, and that's the biggest thing. When he's assisting, getting everybody involved on this team, this is a balanced scoring team, and they are dangerous and hard to guard. McLemore in, Wiley is out. Under 12 to play, and here comes Harper. Puts it in, that was too easy. He's got 10. Getting into the lane, breaking down the defense. And McCormick harassing Murray State. He'll pick up the foul, another media timeout. The Tigers here at home with a six-point lead. Conference play is almost here. Don't forget Saturday, January 5th, right here on the SEC Network, a doubleheader. Number three, Tennessee hosting Georgia at 3.30. Then up next in College Station, Arkansas and Texas A&M. Live from Reed Arena. Both games right here on the SEC Network. Also on the ESPN apps. You can watch them anywhere you may be. And the Auburn Tigers tonight starting to catch fire from downtown. Eight triples with still 12 minutes to go. And they struggled in their last two games, shooting 19% from three. That's why they struggled in those ball games. Much better shooting the basketball here today. It's a variety of guys. It's not one guy. Everybody getting involved, knocking down shots from the outside. This is a difficult team to guard when they're making threes, especially when it comes from multiple players. Tigers led by three at halftime. They have doubled that advantage so far. Here in our second half, and John Morant, as good as advertised, really still under the radar nationally. You see some of the draft websites starting to pick up on the notion that he could be a first rounder. Mentioned I sat next to an NBA scout on the flight in the Auburn area earlier today, and they were coming to scout John Morant against this very talented Auburn team. And this one far from over. John Morant's the real deal. He showed it again here this afternoon. Going against a very good Auburn team. Davis, no look pass, but an offensive foul. No basket. Good offense possession, just come to a jump stop right there. And it's a completed basket. Foul goes against Davis. 11 turnovers now for Murray State. Auburn back to work. And a chance here, Sean, to create some more separation. Tigers led by as many as eight in our first 20 minutes. Harper probing outside. Dunbar for three. Auburn making threes today, but they're taking good threes. And Harper doing a really good job of getting into the lane, sucking into the and then kicking out the shooters. You step into a shot, the percentage is going to go up. Morant, Cowart, blocked. And a late whistle. Free throws upcoming. You know, to that point, six different Tigers have connected from downtown so far in this game. The vision of Morant. Sucks two defenders over to him. Still finds his teammate with the wraparound. Second on Spencer. 
court tonight with eight points, two rebounds. Make it nine. And he used every inch of the rim in the process. Really good game from Darnell Coart. Murray State lost Anthony Smith. Broken ankle four games ago. And Smith was really playing well. Offensive rebounder. Score down low. So you need new guys to step up, kind of fill that role. Coart showing that he can maybe take some of that load. Two big free throws there. That'll stop an 11 0 Auburn run. The put back. Running in was Mac Labor. Now, this Auburn team really a different squad when he went out with that season ending injury last February. Now that he's back, plus Austin Wiley, two bona fide weapons down low. Those two guys really do a good job. Offensive boys. foul. There's the defense. Are putting pressure on the perimeter and sliding his feet. A little bit of an acting job, but <laughs> takes the blow. I was waiting for the response there. Halfway through the second, McCormick off the screen. McLemore straight away triple. Auburn seizing control now, leading by 12. And Bryce Brown now telling Auburn Arena to stand up, and they do. Moran will shoot a pair. We mentioned when Macmore went down last year, it was a different team. Now Auburn can play two different ways. Wiley's in there. They want to go more inside, play inside out, and put Macklemore out there. It's a guy that can pick and pop, can stretch the defense. So you're getting ready to play Auburn. Now you have two different looks. You get ready for the scouting report, whether Auburn's playing big or whether they're playing more perimeter-oriented. Malik Dunbar having some words with Moran at the strike. Our veteran officiating crew trying to interject in that exchange as Moran makes one of two. Now, Murray State needs to start forcing some turnovers. Get back to their style of play. And they do here. This should be good. And it was for Auburn. Dunbar. And Brown skies for the board. Held ball. Arrow favors Auburn. How about McCormick? Oh, Javon McCormick, so much fun to watch around the rim. He's active, a spark off the bench. And he's starting to play with a lot more confidence. Gets in there, ties up. Get the jump ball. Possession arrow is in Auburn's favor. Well, I like what you said, too, and you've mentioned it several times. Auburn can play in several different styles this year compared to a season ago, but... They come at you in waves with the depth off the bench with McCormick, McLemore, Wiley. So many different possibilities for a starting five. Brown initiates the break. Good defense by the Tigers. Brown sizes one up. Count it! And Bryce Brown took a two-game Hiatus, he's back. He looks a lot more comfortable shooting that three. Cowart down low, out of control. Cleaned up by Morant, he'll shoot two. Bryce Brown with 11 points tonight, Sean. And running out on the break, takes a little dribble to get his balance, feet underneath him. Looks like a different player here this afternoon. Mentioned the last two games, 0 for 10 from beyond the arc. Has the flu-like symptoms. That might have kicked in a little bit at NC State game. He just did not look like himself. Looks a lot more like the Bryce Brown you're used to seeing. Yeah, mom and dad got to love that in attendance. Hoping their son was going to see the court 
And he has, despite those flu-like symptoms. I'm going to press the fast-forward button for a moment. Imagine this team we're watching clicking on all cylinders offensively with all of these weapons coming off the bench against a team like Rick Barnes' Tennessee Bunch and, and what they do defensively with Schofield and Grant Williams or Kentucky's young up-and-comers. We got a hint of it last year with this new exciting brand of basketball in this league. I think we're going to get that at even a different level in 2019. And last year, the league. McCormick. Oh, blocked at the rim. Great. Williams got there. Didn't mean to interrupt yeah, you, but great. I thought McCormick was, was going for showtime. Great job meeting him at the rim. We talk about the SEC. Last year, it was very deep. You see in that replay there, nothing easy in this ball game. The very deep league last year, but maybe not that elite team that you thought could be a national title Final Four type team. This year, Tennessee, no question. National title potential Final Four team. And this Auburn team, when they start clicking and hitting on all cylinders, they are a Final Four caliber team as well. Too strong for Okiki. And if Purifoy were to get his shot going off the bench, you know, just returning from the suspension and now getting his feet back underneath him, so to speak. Another player that could help Bruce Pearl out. It shows what Bruce Pearl's done to this program. When you're 9-2, and two, and we're talking about maybe they're struggling a little bit, but Great that's point. what you expect right now is excellence out of this team. Buchanan turns it over. Bruce Pearl is pleased. His team up by 12, under 8 to play. It's Allstate. Good hands play is the Auburn offense. 11 triples made. Seven different players have connected from downtown, Sean. Yeah, we're going to show you every single guy knocking down the three. When you prepare a scouting report against a team, you want to say, who can we take away? Or what's a weakness of this team? And when seven different guys knock down the three, very difficult to prepare for and say, we want to take this one guy away because they can beat you with a number of different guys on the perimeter. Brown, those early triples really got him engaged. And McLemore, just 22% from downtown before this game. He just flipped that one in from the top of the key, making it look so easy. And keep this in mind, too, you mentioned it. Last two games, Auburn 19% from behind the three-point arc. Today, 11 of 28, 39% with seven different players all making a three-point basket. Sharing the wealth, so to speak, here inside Auburn Arena. It's been a great crowd, a sellout crowd. And right before Christmas, a lot of people feeling pretty good about life with this Auburn basketball program. And if you win right before the Christmas break, man, you just feel better. Warm tidings for everybody, right? The food tastes better. Yeah, <laughs> the eggnog's even better. I can't do the eggnog. It's too much. Well, Harper just dribbled through. All five Murray State defenders. Comes up short. Dowdy with a fresh 30. Two teams played an 81-77 thriller last year at Murray State. It was the first SEC school to travel, face the Racers on their home floor. More than 25 years, and Brown just dribbled that one right out of bounds. He just got moving a little too quick that time. He saw the opening baseline. Just left without the basketball. If you're Murray State, what do you want to see, perhaps, from Morant or Buchanan? these next couple of minutes. And attacking the rim again, that's where they're most dangerous. Obviously the focus is on Morant defensively for Auburn. Big or just basket. shoot it from three. Yeah, Brown, talented freshman shooter. More than 42% from downtown this year. He's hit a three ball in every single game he's played in, and that's every game this year for the Racers. Yeah, eight of those nine games, multiple threes in those games. That's what he does, stretches the defense. And so much of the focus is on Morant on that defensive end. Brown's going to find himself open. Lead is nine. Contested layup. Tap back out to Auburn. A big afternoon of college basketball on the SEC network and around the country as Harper probably wanted some a late whistle, and it looked like right on the wrist Morant may have gotten there. 
Stop it, Pop. Brown clears. Big possession for Murray State. Morant versus Harper. It's what we paid to see. Inside. Morant wins that battle. Just so smooth. Multiple moves on the bounce that time from Morant. Big fella goes back to work. Austin Wiley has a free throw coming. Working hard inside. This is why the NBA scouts like what they see out of Morant, just so smooth with the basketball. Multiple moves within the possession. And pops up in the lane. Third foul on Williams. Wiley, three the hard way. Lead is back to 10. John Morant right at his average. He's got 21 on 7 of 12 from the floor. A little up and under. He'll shoot two. That's the other thing scouts want to see. The shot isn't falling. Can you create your own shot? That's not working. Can you get to the line? The answer is, well, Morant can do all three. Obviously, if that, at that next level, you surround him with shooters as well. It's going to open up those driving lanes even more. And he's shown over nine assists a game that he's going to find the open teammate. Morant with 22, and don't forget after Wright State, Mississippi State men's basketball. The SEC Now team will be back to recap all the games of the weekend and talk about news from around the conference. Of course, you can see it streaming live on the ESPN app. That's tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern. It's been a very eventful day so far. We mentioned the Tennessee win against Wake Forest. The balls in the top three and threatening to take over the top spot, perhaps at some point this season. we got Kentucky and North Carolina battling it out. And here, Auburn being tested by Murray State. Tigers lead it by eight. Okiki straight away. He's got 14. Five Auburn players now in double figures. And Wiley was working so hard, posting up. It sucked in the defense. Allowed Okiki to be wide open from the top of the key. Buchanan. You put Harper in transition, you just feel like something big is going to happen. He'll back it out, bleed a little clock. You like that decision? Yeah, great awareness. Push it. You have something, take advantage of it. If not, set up the offense. Harper. Never really got a good look on that attempt. No, and they missed Wiley that time on the cross screen. He was open one of the basketball. And Morant try to take over on this possession. 13 to shoot for Murray State. Well, you watch this Auburn team, and they've been down when they've been up. Smiles everywhere, everybody having fun. That kind of chemistry, I think, bodes well as conference play arrives and postseason play. Also, later in March. Buchanan, offensive foul. You can almost see Jared Harper set that up. He knew it was a late clock situation. He was just sitting on that hand, waiting for that extended arm. Really good defensive effort, effort from Harper. If you're just tuning in, Auburn led by three at halftime. Five lead changes, a couple of ties since then. Tigers used an 11-0 run. And a barrage of three-pointers to create this current separation. And it's been Wiley, it's been Brown, it's been Harper, and this guy. Chuma Okiki has 17. Another big that can stretch the floor for Auburn. That's an understatement. And a foul on the three ball. Tevin Brown will have three free throws. 
coming out of this timeout, and Chimo Kiki, 17 points red hot from downtown. Everybody getting involved. The hot hand is Okiki right now. Another three from the corner. for Auburn and Bruce Pearl coaching as you would expect him to like his hair's on fire there is no quit no back down with this program and what a response in this second half after the loss at NC State an overtime win against UAB it took about 20 minutes for this team to find its rhythm and they finally found it it's been a lot of fun to watch yeah, it was interesting talking with Bruce Pearl at the shoot around we mentioned this is a different team this year because of the inside play. They want to go through Wiley a lot more. Well, that takes an adjustment for all the players to kind of get used to. We have to look inside maybe first where last year it was perimeter, take the open shot, penetrate and kick the shooters. So it's two different styles of basketball now that they're trying to mesh together. It's going to make them better in the long run, yeah. but there's going to be little bumps in the road along the way so you can play two different styles of ball. Murray State was picked second in the Ohio Valley Conference preseason poll, trailing only Belmont, a team that it beat last year, the OVC championship game. This is a team you're probably going to see bust up some brackets come March. And they've been a lot of fun to watch what appears to be an Auburn victory. Still some work to do, three and a half to play. Sean Arrington, Roy Philpott, we hope you've enjoyed this one. It has been a lot of fun in front of a sellout crowd. State, you have to like the way you've answered some of these runs. You're playing in a very difficult environment, a top 10 team. You found yourself down multiple times, able to take the lead. Well, I want the rest of the league to take notice with this environment. I, I thought it was a really nice job with the marketing department here to have the first come, first serve seating. And this lower level was borderline packed with well over an hour before tip. And this crowd recognizing this is a top 10 team. Made the tournament last year, won a game. Six to shoot for Dowdy. And they have responded here right before Christmas. Brown leaps for the board. Still a chance now for the Racers as Morant was fouled by Bryce Brown. Brown picks up his second and free throws coming up. It's a lot for number easier, 12. A lot easier to say than to do, but I think you can't do foul right now in this situation. Stops the clock, puts Murray State to the line. But John Moran just puts so much pressure on you. He's coming with a full head of steam. Gotta get those feet moving quick. Gotta get those feet moving early. I was listening to Tom Hart and Jimmy Dykes call that Tennessee Wake Forest game and Jimmy made the comment that Jalen Horde, one of the top freshmen for Wake, ended up with a lot of points, but a lot of those points came in garbage time when the outcome was already decided. John Morant with those 25 tonight, the majority of those coming when the game was still in doubt. Now, Horde's a freshman, Morant's a sophomore, but you get that kind of performance on this kind of stage against this kind of team. A lot of the draft praise is legitimate as Brown saved that pass. 38 at Alabama in a game that went down to the wire as well. So those are not stat padding games. Those are crunch time numbers. Morant wanted the alley-oop. Instead, Cowart with a finish and a collision on the attempted inbounds. Let's see how they rule this. No foul. It was accidental contact, but an eight-point game, just over two to play. And we've seen it from Murray State. They can score quickly, especially when you have a player like John Morant that can score for himself or set up his teammates. And all of a sudden, this becomes an important possession. Harper defended by Buchanan. The high ball screen. 10 to shoot. Dowdy in traffic. He'll shoot a pair. 
Well, Dowdy quietly has gotten the job done. Sean, he's got 14 points, and you know, he's averaging right at eight per game. The VCU transfer leads the team with 19 steals this year. Now he's got 50. And an efficient score. When you take a look at his numbers, shooting 47% from the field, almost 40% from three. 92 from the line as he knocks down two more. That's what you love to see, a guy that's not getting high-volume shots but putting up good numbers. You were a high-volume guy. I had to be a high-volume yes. guy. It's the only way I could score. There's a lot of attempts up. Morant, the spin, out of control, swatted away by Okiki. Down a little Euro step. And this one now certainly feeling like an impressive Auburn victory. Really good stand there by Auburn. Back to back offensive possessions with buckets. Mid range jumper by Tevin Brown. He's got 16. We remind you as well, the SEC Network has got you covered for the upcoming college football playoff semifinal games, including Alabama and Oklahoma next Saturday, a week from today. SEC Nation at 10 and 7. SEC Goal Line at noon, thinking out loud as part of the Megacast at 8. And SEC Now to wrap it all up at 11.30 and, of course, also on the ESPN app. Alabama OU on one side, Clemson Notre Dame on the other. A lot of pundits suggesting it's going to be round four between the Tigers and the Tide as both teams are double-digit favorites. You got Kyler Murray, Tua Tunga Bailoa, those two quarterbacks, one and two in the Heisman voting. And you better be ready to score some points to win that one. It's going to be a lot of fun. And yeah, that's what you hope to see. You want to see some high-scoring games. You just mentioned it, hard to go against Alabama and Clemson all year long. Those have been the two teams that have really separated themselves been a different Crimson Tide program. The offense has been so much more explosive. Defense is rock solid. Maybe not as good, as dominant as what it's been, but we will see what it looks like after December 29th. National Championship game in Santa Clara this year. Meanwhile, Auburn will get Purdue in the Music City Bowl. The Tigers faithful will get a chance to see Rondale Moore, the leading freshman receiver in the nation. A lot of people around here Curious to see how Gus Malzahn can close out this season. Big game against Purdue. Pump fake by Dowdy. Took a tumble. It'll shoot a pair. 18 points, four rebounds, a couple of dimes dropped by number 10 in white, Samir Dowdy. Dowdy with 13, Sean, in the second half. And it's really, it's been in quiet fashion. He's made a couple of shots here and there. At the end of the night, the tally is impressive. And we talked about him being an efficient scorer, but also a guy that doesn't need a play drawn up for him. He just goes and gets buckets, goes and gets points within the flow of the offense. It makes it happen. Brown from the corner. That's a triple. Brown with 19. He's 5 of 7 from bonus land, and that'll the lead back down to nine. Now tell me what you think about Morant. We've talked a lot about him. The 25 points, eight rebounds, five assists. Came into this game leading the country. At almost 10 dimes drop per contest. What do you make of the performance? Well, he's everything that he was advertised to be. His athletic ability is as good as you can see anywhere in the country. He can get to the rim, scores in traffic, changes pace, changes direction. That's what makes him so difficult to guard. He's got a good-looking shot. You want to see those percentages climb up. He's only at 30%. But if he continues to work on that shot, that's going to improve. And obviously the assists, over nine assists a game. His basketball IQ is the one thing that everyone's starting to rave about now. He's playing at a different pace, at a different speed, seeing guys open, seeing plays happen. He's a step ahead. And when you start looking against top competition. You see Alabama on there, Auburn on there. You put up those kinds of numbers against those kinds of teams, it's going to raise some eyebrows. The shot selection, not too shabby, 7 of 12. So you know, we saw him try to maybe force a couple of passes in, but in terms of shots, he's kind of been selective, and you kind of like the approach. Yeah, he's not a shot hunter. He's not going to go and, and take a lot of shots. He can score the basketball when he needs to. 
And last year he was such a good facilitator, getting guys involved, that that's carried over this year. And knowing he needed to pick up the scoring load this year after they lost a couple key seniors. Out of the timeout, only 50 seconds remaining in Murray State. See if the racers elect to try to foul and extend the contest. Harper, one of the best free throw shooters in America. But Okiki turns it over. Shuffled his feet. It's never easy closing out a game, right? If you're a coach, I mean, this is what gives you the gray hair or makes you lose your hair. No question. And this is the ones that you look at for film in the next few days that you need to work on. Situations going against full court pressure defense. The next time I talk to Bruce Pearl, I got to ask him, where does all this energy come from, man? He never takes a second off, and you love it. Morant, back iron, Cowart. Clock will stop. Chance to make this a seven point game. So Wiley picks up his third personal. Darnell Cowart, junior from Chicago, junior college transfer. Played himself a pretty nice game tonight. He really did, and we mentioned Anthony Smith done for the year for Murray State. He was getting the bulk of the minutes on the inside, so they need somebody else to step up, and Darnell Cowart has showed that maybe he can be the guy to fill some of those minutes. He looked very comfortable out there this afternoon. Harper, a rare turnover. Morant versus Okiki, the lob and the flush to Buchanan. Look up, two possession game. Well, Morant's athleticism well documented. Buchanan, it looked like he was going to hit his head on the rim. First half we had one that looked just like it didn't count because of a charge. I thought it was maybe the best looking dunk that we would see that didn't count. Well, this was right there with it. Very impressive out on the break. Spot throwing now, and I can't move. And here's a steal. Buchanan left wide open for three. One possession game, 91-88. And Harper was fouled. Boy, this team can go on a run, and I mean a big time run, in less than a minute, get right back in just about any kind of game. Give Murray State all kinds of credit. Not quitting, continuing the pressure, causing turnovers, great awareness from Brown to keep it in bounds and find an open shooter. Harper 0 for 2 at the line. He came in at 92%. Buchanan now with 21 points. Morant with 25 and a big free throw there. And if you're Auburn, how do you close out games? Don't turn the basketball over. They've done that here. Can't foul on the defensive end. They fouled a few times. We've got to make your free throws. So Harper at least able to make a free throw there. Two big ones. 18.8 seconds remaining. And Auburn's going to utilize a timeout. Now Bruce Pearl trying to settle the troops down here. Those free throws certainly will help his cause. You're Murray State, what are you thinking right now? Well, there's plenty of time. you got a guy like Ja Morant that can get to the rim so fast. That's what you want to do. Continue to score to extend this game. Put the pressure back on Auburn. So if you can get a real quick bucket here, you're still going to have 11, 12, 13 seconds. And then you've seen Auburn has been turnover prone against the pressure. You set up your defense, see if you can get a quick turnover. If not, real quick foul. Make Auburn earn it at the line. Murray State in the second half, 8 of 11 from bonus land. They've made five of their last six field goal attempts. A couple of free throws in there by Coward. And I'll admit it, I'm stunned by what we've seen here in the last 20 seconds alone. Yeah, no quit in this team. Matt, Matt McMahon's got his team playing hard and believing that they can pull this one out. Morant double team, attacking, up and under off the mark. Cowart corrals it. Three ball by Brown is short. Tap to Buchanan. Three seconds left. 
And Auburn will survive. Ninety-three, eighty-eight. the final score. Five different Tigers reaching double figures, and what a game this was, Sean. Everything we were hoping to be. Two really good point guards going back and forth. High pace, lots of energy. It's a good win for Auburn against a possible NCAA tournament team in Murray State. Samir Dowdy led the charge with 20 points on six of seven from the floor and four rebounds to boot. 93-88 the final as we send you back to the studio and SEC now.